Hey there everybody, who's ready to do another painting? This one's a huge surprise. I bet you'll never guess what kind of a painting we're doing today. Oh, maybe it's a dustpan pour. Yeah. Okay, so this, this is a mini dustpan. It's like five inches wide. And I've used this for some larger ones, but clearly on an eight inch canvas, a five or six inch dustpan, it's a little bit oversized. I mean, you could, you could do one half and then you could do the other half, but I found these little plastic scoops at my local grocery store, and I thought these are basically a narrow dustpan. So I'm gonna to try to be using this one today, which is about an inch and a half wide, maybe. I'm gonna see if I can do it in just four passes. I think I can do it in four. I think the paint will flow out a little bit and I can tweak it as necessary, but a dustpan pour. So this, this is a great technique for beginners because it doesn't take crazy recipes. It doesn't take uh, silicone or any kind of cell activator. Um, you don't have to layer your paint any particular way. You just stick some paint in a dustpan and pull it out across your canvas to create this really cool, it's like patterned ribbons. It's been a really long time since I've done one of these because I've been spending more time doing experimentation with other techniques. So I can't wait to do this today. <clears throat> so I got my earth tones colors and I have pretty much all my earth tones colors. So metallic copper, metallic gold, um, burnt umber, green oxide, phthalo green and some white and my white today is not house paint like I would usually use because I had some of this already mixed up I think this is a mix of apple barrel and sergeant white paint which I like to use for a lot of base coats so hopefully that won't sink but will play well with the other colors okay so with a dustpan pour you start by layering your colors in the dustpan and then once you have enough paint, you pull it out across. So I'm just gonna give myself a little space here and start layering some paint. So oh, hang on one second while I think about which colors should go next to which colors. So I'm gonna start with some burnt umber here in the bottom and then some gold and I'm going to make it try to pour um, pretty smooth round layers because I would love for it to have kind of this egg shaped pattern as it stretches out. We'll see if that actually happens. I'm going to add just a little bit more of this burnt umber brown to the front to make sure I have enough paint for it to start flowing on its own. Okay. So I'm gonna start here in the middle and just gently tip it. And then as it flows, you pull. Okay, so I think what I've demonstrated here is that I didn't have enough paint in the in the front before the pattern started, which is why the pattern started really, really fast here. 
and then fade it out. So with the next one that I do, I'm going to put more paint in it to begin with and more paint up at the front. But first, let me go wash this out really quick so that we can start afresh. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna start afresh right here. That way we've got some extra paint in the bottom right from the start. So here I'm gonna put white in the bottom. That'll be sort of my outside layer. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing here. And this little scoop is nice because it naturally tilts back a bit. On a dustpan, you'd wanna prop it up slightly so that your paint won't flow out until you want it to. So I'm layering these in the same order each time. I'm just starting with a different one. And your sort of center oval, you want that to be as clean and oval as possible because the shape will stretch, but it'll still stay pretty close to what you had already. Okay, and now I'm gonna add more white here in the front. Okay, and take it over here and start my second one. All right, check that out. So that one's better centered. I love that. Okay, um, let's layer up the next one. It still is a pretty clean uh, base layer that I've got here, so I'll just keep the leftover paint in there and keep adding on the top. This time I'll start with the phthalo green. I don't know that I ever said it. I think I was so excited to get going that I forgot to mention uh, the consistency of my paint today is medium thick. So it's like flip cup consistency or a little bit thicker because as much as possible, I don't really want the paint interacting. It has to be able to flow, that's for sure, um, but it's it's not, you don't want it to be really thin for this. Um, otherwise, the colors will blend together and get a little bit muddy. Or they'll react and they'll make cells if you, you know, which you probably don't want for this one. So. So do use thicker, thicker paint for this technique. Okay, I'm gonna add some more of the phthalo green up here at the front. And yeah, put it out here. Okay, I left too much space here, so I'll end up filling that in with another color, probably the phthalo green, just to sort of continue that edge. So the other cool thing with this is because you're not creating cell reactions, um, it's very easy to take just the original paints and fill them in how you want.
carefully pour it out, and once it starts flowing, then you start moving. Oops. We're spilling over the edge. Well, that's not quite what I wanted. Oh well. Since this one's all on the canvas and that one's going off, but it'll be okay. All right, so I've got my four little, I don't know what they are, little pods, little rocket ships. I've got the, the stripes, but there's all these bare sections of canvas, which clearly something needs to happen with those. So I'm gonna add phthalo green over on this edge. So all those hollow spaces, you just choose what color do I want to go there. I like blending in with the colors that are already nearby, but you might want to add something totally different, who knows? Okay, so that side's covered, and I may end up tilting it this way a little bit. I might, I'm not sure. But first, let me, let me fill in a little bit of these other areas that didn't get filled. So I'm gonna add burnt umber here, because that's the color that was in this direction. So I've got all of my edges now, and I do think I want to try to stretch it just slightly this way, so it doesn't seem off center. But I want to stretch it really carefully. Okay, so do you see how it's warping there? Maybe you want the warp. I don't, so I, I, I'm bringing it back now. Back to how it was, except that now this has gone off the side to mirror that one. So to me, that looks much more balanced and the lines are pretty straight. So I like that. The last thing to fix is the little centers, which you could fix with a brush afterwards, or you can kind of just add some paint now. So like, I'm gonna add some white and then some of the green to try to fix this shape and make it look a little bit neater here. Also this one down here, I'm going to add some white to that. So there's really a lot that you can do to the shape if you don't like it just by putting in some more paint right at the end. Okay, so now I'm going to tweak this, these two greens. I 
Actually, I don't hate that one now. And the last thing I'm going to do is add a little bit more color to the centers. Just to make the centers a little bit smaller. So, so I'm going to add some of this phthalo green here right to the center of that. Oh, I hope that wasn't a mistake. Now it's looking like an eyeball. No, I think that'll be good. And then, let's see, white would go here on top of the gold. So there you have a dustpan pour, and of course I did it very small, but if you're using an actual dustpan, in the same amount of work, you can fit, uh, fill a much bigger canvas. Um, yeah, so just check your edges, make sure everything's covered, and then run a popsicle stick underneath to catch the drips, and you're good to go. Let me give you a close-up. All right, so here we go. It doesn't look that different close up than it does from a distance, but you can see all those layers that we got by stacking the paint. So anyway, it's a really fun technique, very simple for beginners, but also something that more experienced painters can do some pretty cool things with. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.